All right, we are here up in Harlem at the 125th Street branch of the New York Public Library. And I just had the pleasure of being on a panel with three other amazing young adult authors. We're going to start with Kekla Magoon, who is the author of The Rock and the River, which won the Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Award for New this Talent. This is my question for you. The civil rights movement has been covered in many books for young adults. Your novel addresses the moment when many young people reject nonviolence in favor of the Black Panther's message of self-defense. With gun violence devastating many urban communities today, why did you decide to revisit that particular moment in time? I've always been really fascinated with history, particularly the civil rights movement history, because I learned so much about it as a kid, or I thought I learned so much about it as a kid, because you know we studied Dr. King and his speeches, and we studied Rosa Parks and segregation and the Montgomery bus boycott and all that was done within the nonviolent civil rights movement to create change and end segregation and promote equality. Um, and then as an adult, I was surprised to learn about the Black Panther Party, which had a very proactive community organizing approach that I had no idea about. Um, the, the image I, I always had of the Black Panther Party was black men with guns and big and scary and violent, you know, in the ghetto running rampant, trying to create problems. And that is not at all the Black Panther Party that I've come to know in doing this research. And um, so I, my, my initial inspiration for writing the book was to try to tap into what it might have felt like to be a teenager living in 1968 when you had to make a decision, whether you wanted to or not, you had to decide, are you going to take action or not, first of all, but then you're going to decide, am I going to take action with the nonviolent civil rights movement as it's been for the last... 12 years, or am I going to join with the Black Panther Party and take a different tack? You know, am I going to let this anger manifest in a different way? And I think that a lot of the issues that the Black Panther Party was founded to respond to, police brutality and poverty and lack of health care, lack of equality, all of those issues are still present in the black community. So for me, writing about a historical time period is, in a sense, writing about our current situation, and I think it illuminates some of the the struggles that young people today have to have to make. Some of the same struggles that young people today have to have to deal with, trying to decide whether they're going to embrace violence in some way, whether they're going to embrace community organizing in some way, whether they're going to be uh, productive members of society, whether they're going to be activists. All of those choices kids are still making today, but they're in some senses taught that that those decisions are done, that you don't have to choose because segregation is over, the civil rights movement was victorious and now we're all living happily ever after, which isn't really the case. And so for young people today who are facing those decisions, I think it's a, writing about history and talking about the incomplete nature of the civil rights movement is a way to validate their current struggle. So for me, it reflects both what was happening then and what is happening now. question for you, Rita. You also address the Black Panther Party like Kekla does but from the perspective of three black girls. Now, the contributions of women have often been left out of history. What price have women paid for their participation in political movements? Um, women, um, especially in the Black Panther movement, have paid every kind of price that we can imagine. Um, they have sacrificed everything and anything pertaining to the self, personal, um, personal um, career goals, uh, familial, um, um, Everything and anything, um, they have lost. They have lost um, mates, um, husbands, sisters, comrades. Um, they've lost. Uh, they've they've given. Uh, they've been arrested. Um, they have seen their. Uh, they've seen their loved ones arrested and beaten. Um, uh, um, Asada Shakur gave birth in prison. Um, she was able to finally escape, uh, but the, at the sacrifice of not having her daughter. Um, uh, uh, if you ever hear Tupac Shakur's, um, or uh, see Tupac Shakur's documentary on MTV, he talks about growing up in the cause and how his mother was not there for him be, uh, because she was totally invested in the cause. You were you were um, you you gave completely to the cause. Um, you you lived a life. Uh, people did marry. Erica Hug Erica Huggins, who was the um, uh, she headed um, uh, the um, liberation school, and I know I'm saying the wrong school. It's the um, the Oakland Community School. Um, uh, she 
Ashley lost her husband, uh, John um, Huggins, who was the Minister of Defense. She did not lose him, he was murdered. So these women, um, these women gave everything. They had everything to lose, they lost everything, but it was all for the cause. And so in giving up that self, they were giving to the whole, they were giving to the community, and not just the community, but the global community. And yet, your primary female character, adult character in One, More, One Crazy Summer, uh, Cecile or Nzila, uh, has actually made a deliberate decision to sacrifice um, mothering her children, uh, not only for the cause, but for her own art. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think Cecile really is more about Cecile than anybody's cause. Um, even the children, as they're um, do, uh, doing their little spy mission, trying to hear what she's saying to the Panthers, they, they hear her objecting, resisting, um, tr um, uh, uh, helping the cause. Um, and, and I did that simply because I just felt that she had to be her own self, even at all, um, at all sacrifice, um, that if she was going to sacrifice her children, she was going to sacrifice the cause too, or do things um, begrudgingly. Um, and, it, and that is a part of the woman's struggle to be self, to be uh, self-actualized, to be an artist, to simply be and not be tethered to anything, um, children, cause, what have you. So, uh, so she is the anti-Delphine who, um, who really uh, does um, tie herself to responsibility. Um, and, and this is the ultimate, these are the ultimate words of wisdom that she has for her daughter. Um, uh, be selfish, you, you know, yeah. live for yourself. And, uh, and it, this is something that's very hard for women of struggle, women who are involved in struggle. And my to, question for you, in your novels, the past seems to materialize in the form of a black female ghost. Do you feel that the legacy of slavery continues to haunt today's teens? Yes, I think that um, it should if it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really, you know, what I want to do is to bring um, history to young people in a relevant way. Um, and it's very important for me to to have, um, you know, contemporary characters in contact, almost physical contact if they can, um, with the past. Uh, I think that especially uh, African American women uh, have traditionally been the you know the passers on, the storytellers, um, the teachers, uh, and it seemed natural to use them. Um, my work with women, um, you know, throughout my career um, in institutions and in schools, and um, it, it's it's sort of just the natural voice for me. Um, I'm trying to, to use male voices more often, but it's difficult for me. Um, I really uh, think that teenagers uh, now uh, do need to look back to the past because we have this sort of sense of, well, we have a black president, so we don't have racism, things are easy now. We ha I think people of color have a sense of entitlement um, that they didn't have before, that they never had before. Um, and I don't want that to turn us into, you know, um, brown white people or brown entitled people. Um, because it's necessary for us to recognize that our struggle, um, you know, we, where we have gotten has been through other people, through other people's sacrifice. And unless we are willing to continue to make sacrifices, having a black president, it really doesn't make any difference.